Okay. Hi, everybody, and thank you, Amanda, and everyone at Promethean. Uh, first of all, for having me today. Today is a great day. It's a great week for teacher appreciation, um, and it's great that Promethean does this amazing uh, set of workshops. I know there have been some amazing workshops throughout the day, and hopefully we'll end up with a bang here with uh, digital sketch noting. Uh, we are going to start with class flow. So I want to do something with uh, class flow to start. So um, I'm going to have you do a word seed, which is really going to be an interactive engagement question. So if you could go to Classflow, I believe that's going to be classflow.com and sign in. We're going to go ahead and give you my um, open class code, which is on the panel there. And if someone could put it in the chat, that would be great. It's going to be QDNZ8. And the question I want to ask you is to see uh, almost like a pre-test kind of question. What do you know about digital sketch noting or just sketch noting itself? So whatever you can think about what you think digital sketch noting might be, go ahead and put that in. We're going to put up some of the um, responses up on the board. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show some memes as well because you do have the opportunity to do that. And as you can see, with Classflow, it's really easy to get quick feedback as you guys are doing. So we already have a few that are coming in. And it gives the teacher a really great opportunity to see um, what the kids already know, okay? So in case you wanted to group them appropriately or to, uh, just determine how your lesson is going to go, it's a great place to start just for um, data purposes. So I'll stand back out of the way for a second so you could see this. I'm actually gonna go ahead. I'm not gonna share my screen just yet because I want you to be able to do this. Um, I'll share my screen at the end so you can see it a little clearer. Um, but you could see as the our students, quote unquote, our students are, putting in their thoughts and ideas. It's popping up on my panel as we go. I also have the opportunity to move um, all of these around. I could group them. I could color code them if I wanted to. So if I wanted to put um, some of the ideas together and color code, I do this. I do this a lot with the kids as well, where the kids actually go ahead and do all of the uh, arranging for me sometimes. So it's not always me at the panel. I do let the kids come up and use it because you do want them to interact with it. So this is a really great way, once again, just to get a quick idea, gather some data to see what your students in your class already know. Now, you're here because you're obviously are interested in the topic, and there are a lot of you in here today, but you can see how easy it is to just organize and see on the screen what we have, okay? so. Um, just some pre-test uh, pre kind of questions, you know. Um, the assignment for chemo, that was, what do you think digital sketch noting is? Okay, it could be your guess, best guess. It doesn't have to be correct. It's, it's what you think it might be. It's, and again, another good way for the teacher um, that's delivering the lesson to get some quick feedback, okay? So go ahead, I'll give you guys another maybe 30 seconds to put in. If you guys are having trouble, give you another 30 seconds, and then we'll go on. Um, to show you how this works. So chemo, awesome job, okay. Perfect, and if you need help connecting, you're going to just visit the web browser, classflow.com slash student, and then you'll see the opportunity to put in Adam's class code, which is that QDNZ8 that we've put in the chat, and then it should ask you for your name and allow you to join in and give him some feedback. So if you are having any difficulty connecting, please reach out to us in the chat window. And Adam, I think you have a few more people attempting to connect to you to get you some responses there. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we'll give them a little bit more time. It's a really fun way. I got to tell you, my kids love doing this. And on days where we don't do class flow, they get very disappointed. So they do like to do this. They do, they love to have their voice heard. And it is a great way to get everybody in the class um, to represent themselves and to actually put in um, their thoughts and ideas as well. And again, this is an interactive engagement questioning technique where I'm just asking a simple question. The question, once again, for those of you who are just starting or coming in now was, what do you know about digital sketch noting as is? Just what you think you might know about it. And you can see as everyone is starting to put in some of the responses, we get a good blend of um, you know, ideas and suggestions. Some of the answers are spot on and some may not be correct, but that's okay. And that's what's good about this. It allows for an open discussion um, to kick off your uh, lesson. It's a great way to engage the kids. They're on the computer. They're not on the computer for very long because as you can see, it doesn't take too long to put in the responses, but it does allow for a great conversation after that, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I've got a couple more coming in. Heather just popped in. 
great for visual learners. I'm just going to read off some of them, um, and then we're going to see how close you guys were. Um, a quick right, Remy, a quick right, good. Uh, when you draw main points of a lecture or discussion, Judy, that is pretty much on point. Uh, quick draws, yes, Anna, absolutely. Quick draws, 100%. No put down drawing. Um, I like that because that's going to be part of our discussion today. Um, David has the blended notes. I like that. Blended, it's almost like blended remote learning, right? Blended uh, learning there. Blended note taking and using perspectives to remember content, 100%. Princess Leia, I love that because it is May the 4th and May the 4th be with you. Visualizing notes, absolutely. Okay, Julie has a quick and easy way to synthesize knowledge. That's true, 100%. Um, allow students to make connections. Yep, Laura has that down for sure. Uh, we said that we talked about the visual learners. Um, Liz has heard of sketch notes, but never done them or assigned them. I almost guarantee you, you're going to want to do this and assign this today. I've done uh, a PD similar to this with my own staff a couple of times in the last uh, a month and a half or so, and a lot of them are starting to do this more and more, especially with Google Classroom. So what I'm going to do is um, let me go ahead and just share my screen so that you could see a little clearer um, what everyone has pretty much done, and I could kind of uh, you know just annotate over this a little bit. So what is really cool about this again. As you can see, a lot of you participated, and thank you for trying to get in there, even if you're still having trouble, thank you for trying. Um, but this is a really great way, especially if you're still doing remote learning. Um, even using your computer at school with the kids at home, using Zoom and the, um, the annotate tool, you can go ahead and you can um, you know, annotate over something. You can go ahead and highlight words that you wanna highlight. So it's a really great tool to use in conjunction with your everyday learning, all right? So really great job, and really all of you have pretty much hit uh, digital sketch noting um, on the head. I'm gonna go ahead and share again. I'm gonna be sharing back and forth a little bit. I wanna show you exactly um, what uh, sketch notes are. Now, this is just traditional sketch noting, not necessarily digital just yet. We'll get into the digital in a, in a second. But obviously we have the sketch part, and a lot of you said um, before you, you were talking about the draw part, and that is 100% correct. And then we have the note section, right? And of course, that's great. But in order to do sketch noting, what we want to do is incorporate the symbols, even icons or pictures, right? They're drawing by hand, or in this case, we're going to be doing some digital stuff, so not necessarily handwriting. Uh, the visual elements come into play with shapes and graphic organizers, obviously pictures, symbols, uh, subtitles, even quotes, titles of things, okay? Phrases short vocabulary, all these things combined and together when you include all of this gives you sketch noting. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go digital on it. So let me clear off this so I can show you a quick video about sketch noting, digital, well, regular sketch noting, and then we're gonna transform that into a digital sketch note using Google Drawer, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, all I'm doing is sharing my screen. Um, take a look at this short video so you understand a little bit more about sketch notes. Hello and welcome to Sketchnoting in the Classroom. My name is Doug Neal. I will be your host throughout this series, and I wanted to kick things off by letting you know what we'll be up to. First, let's talk about that word sketchnoting, which might be new to you. Sketchnoting is a form of note-taking, hence the noting part of it. But as you might guess, it involves bringing more visuals into the process compared to typical note-taking, hence the sketch part. The whole idea behind adding sketches to your notes is that it taps into parts of your brain that would lie dormant if you only use words to explore ideas. It's the combination of the two that's most powerful, using both words and visuals while taking notes. That's what will fully light up your brain. What's nice about sketchnoting is that it's not a strict format. It doesn't say you have to take notes this way. Instead, it presents you with a variety of tools for you to choose from and create your own customized note-taking process, one that works well with your learning style and your personality. 
So for the doodlers out there, your notes might be heavy on the sketches. For those who prefer working with words, you might stick mostly to that, but maybe bring in some diagrams here and there to help you organize those words. And there's plenty of room for everyone in between those two ends of the spectrum. So most of what we'll be doing in this series is introducing you to a variety of note-taking tools and letting you experiment as you combine them in different ways to help you take better notes in class, study better outside of class, plan projects more effectively, and ultimately become better at working with and presenting ideas. Those are skills that are never going to go out of style, which is part of the reason your instructor decided to bring me into your classroom in this way. Speaking of, I wanted to point out that this thing here is going to be a collaboration between me and your instructor and you all. I'll be introducing lots of ideas to you in this there. This is the same video that you just saw that I showed my students. Now I've done this in grades three through five. I've been teaching media arts for uh, the last, I don't know, 12, 15 years now. And usually I see K to five. This year I only saw grades two to five. And I did this with all the kids in grades three, four, and five. And I have to tell you, they really liked it. And the more they liked it, the more I was able to find to do with it. So it's a really great way to engage your kids. It's a super way to expand the curriculum because you can now, of course, incorporate technology into it. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to share some examples of what my kids did first and then show you how you could do some of your own. Okay. Um, I have a bunch here on my panel and, and what you're seeing as the, um, the, the shared screen, but I'm going to go through some of these uh, specifically because what it does is it does allow us to get inside what the kids can do and what they're capable of doing, which is really important. Okay. Um, in this case, what I did over the last uh, couple of months is I tried to expand what I do with media arts, which is coding and animation and digital drawing to what they've been doing at home. A lot of the kids were home because of remote uh, um, you know, situations. So in this case, what I asked them to do is connect to a science topic that they were doing with the science teacher. So I collaborated with the science teacher to find out what that particular grade was doing at the time. And at this time back, um, uh, it was, this was happened to me made 11 days ago, they were doing renewable and non-renewable resources. I also partnered with our social studies teacher and did some things with the fifth grade for uh, Canada and the fourth grade who were learning all about the Iroquois. So we did lots of connections because it allowed me to not only teach them um, the, the Google drawing format and the platform, but it also gave me a, a great opportunity to have the kids share with one another and work together collaboratively. It allowed me to go into their work and actually give them some feedback as we went. And, and the best part about the whole thing was that it allowed them to be free. It allowed them to decide how they wanted to do this. Now, again, we're doing this in Google Drawing. I found that Google Drawing was the best for uh, digital sketch noting because it really is just one particular page. That's it. It's not like Google Slides where you'd have the ability to add multiple pages, but it, it is a good way to kind of force them to just go onto one page, just like they would do if they were using a regular paper and pencil and, and their own notebook to take notes. Okay, so in this case, um, you can see a lot of great things about this and just move my and by the way, I used my panel with the kids who were remote for a couple of reasons. I used it because not only could I share my screen and annotate, but you could also see me in the upper right hand corner. So if I was clicking and dragging and moving some things, the kids were able to follow along pretty well with me. And you could do this, of course, if you're doing some kind of screencasting too. the same idea. Um, so in this case, um, we talk about digital sketch notes. They were asked to do the combination, obviously, of, um, you know, what they wanted to do. And, you know, here we, are, we have the renewable, the non-renewable. They, this particular uh, student wanted to do it in a T-chart kind of uh, format. So um, he broke it up that way, right, with pieces of information. So we had great bits of information, not a lot. Of course, we did take some time to talk about, you know, short bits of information, phrases, keywords, things like that not to put in giant paragraphs because you're just going to run out of space if you do that. Um, what's great about what they started to do as well was also put in some links to other websites and you're going to see, I'll show you some that include also a video to YouTube. Um, 
pictures that they found using Google Drawing. Of course, I'll show you this all, uh, Google Images rather, I'll show you this all in just a few minutes. Just wanted to give you an idea as to some of the different varieties that the kids had. Now, again, um, I let them be free with this. I did not tell them how to do it. I didn't tell them uh, you know, how to set up their page. I really wanted them to have the ability to decide on their own what they wanted to do to make it their own. I didn't want to tell them you have to have 10 pictures. You have to have two vocabulary words. You had to do a Venn diagram. I didn't want to do that. I really wanted them to have the freedom to go in any direction that they want. And as you can see, even in this uh, particular uh, case, the Venn diagram and just shorter bits of information um, they have the title, right? They have, you know, everything broken up on the, in the correct uh, locations. And it also allows me, which is really awesome, to go in and help them out. So if they're struggling with uh, any, you know, grammar issues or spelling issues, I could also go in and help them out and join them. And a lot of times we actually went into breakout rooms and groups and, and different groups shared, which is just a lot of fun uh, in and of itself. Um, we also did and all about me. So for those of you who want to do this, maybe with the lower grades, okay, I'd show them, we started very simply put with an all about me digital sketch note. If you were going to tell someone about you digitally in pictures and short phrases or words, what would it be, right? What would it look like? So I put a whole, you know, thing together for them. This is the finished product, so to speak. We almost, we didn't finish. This is what I stopped and let them start on their own, right? So just really great ideas as to how to use this um, stuff. Here's a fun one because it was related to uh, hurricanes um, and blizzards, I think. I think, or this one just was hurricanes. So this was a third grade science um, lesson. You could see how we put in, you know, different, um, you know, bits of information on the side and some feedback on the side. But this particular student also, which is great, started to add YouTube links, right? So in this case, we also talked about if you were studying for a test, and you were going ahead to put together sketch noting so that when you look back at it, you could study your notes and you found some video on it that helped you visually or maybe summed it up for the test itself. Why not put it in? So a lot of them started to do that. And when you click on that and click on the link, let's see if I could get in there. Let's see if I could do it on my, my laptop itself. When you click on the link, you'll see this in a second. Oh, there we go. It'll open up. And so this particular student has gone ahead and put the video in. Of course, uh, we have to wait for, I believe, the... Parents are quick to protect. Raid! Just like Michael. Raid, Ant, and Roach. Okay, so I'm just going to put a link as, as this goes. So it's a great way to do this because now what they've done is put in some video. And the link goes directly to what they were doing. Let me get that video going so you get a good idea. Okay, I've just muted it so that... I could talk over it, but you get a very good idea as to what the kids have done. Now, this particular, we also talked about finding appropriate videos, right, for what they were doing. And so this is a perfect way, once again, just brings in the science and just opens up the dimension of what they're learning and studying and working on at the same time and really expands it out to accept, you know, just not just a, a pencil and a notebook, but also expands that all the way out to um, digital uh, information, okay? I want to show you some other ones. This was our Iroquois, which is a fourth grade uh, group. Okay, and again, just bits of information. We talked about in um, when we did this that we didn't want to um, put in a tremendous amount of of information, as if you were going through a, a museum. You wouldn't be reading a lot of information, but you'd be learning a lot of information. So in this case, that's what they did. Found some pictures, some great bits of information. I like how this particular student. Let me get my annotation again. This particular student used arrows, okay, to go ahead, go along with what they were uh, talking about because otherwise you don't really, you know, some of these could get pretty complicated and pretty intense. And you wouldn't really know where to look first or where the information, uh, what, what information matches with the picture. So that was also something good that I liked in this particular case. And let me get rid of my, I'm always uh, working on that annotation button, right? So this one's a fun one to give, give you some really great ideas. So you can see the differentiated kind of versions of this. You can see the different levels, how much kids did, what they, you know, you know, if fully expected of themselves. Um, in this particular case was great because Venn diagram of just comparing blizzards and hurricanes. Okay. 
a lot of did you know facts, right? So we had a did you know, so some facts, lots of video clips to go along, great information, okay, specific information, right? Wind speeds could reach 74 miles an hour in a minimal hurricane, blizzards 35 miles an hour for I think three hours, yep, three hours, there it is. And of course, our visuals, which help tremendously when you're adding to your sketch note. Because again, remember, and, and this is something if you're doing this with your kids, you really have to kind of drive home a couple of times. It's a sketch note, just like we showed the definition in the beginning when we did class well, right? It's a sketch note. So you're sketching your notes digitally. And when you're doing it digitally like this, you want to make sure that you're including all of the pictures that go along with the information. That's the key. Information first, but the pictures that go along with it. Now, the bonus, of course, would be all of those uh, video links that you have at the very bottom. Okay. Let's see if I can get one more to show you. Let me get rid of it. See, once again, got to clear my annotations. I did this with the kids all the time, uh, and they, you know, got a kick out of it. Um, this one is a good one, too. Again, you could see this is a fifth grade group, a little bit more intense. Um, I did allow some of these groups to work together, so some of them shared. Okay, and you'll see that in, in a few minutes, but if I go ahead and click the share button on the right hand side here, I can share out my project as the owner of the file to other people. And again, this goes in together with um, Google Classroom and all the things that your kids have probably been using over the last uh, year or so, or even more. Some of them have been using it even more, okay? And you can see lots of great information here. The color coding is fantastic. So it's another thing that this particular student did. Um, has a lot of information, true. Um, this particular student stretched out the page because he did need a little bit more space. So you can see the size uh, of the, 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 the picture of the, of the frame is bigger. And he was able to put more information in. Very neat, very organized, very specific. And again, I love the color coding. I love the fact that he used the, um, the black arrows right, just to highlight what the crust would be, the inner core, the outer core, being all specific with it. The other thing I really liked was this generic picture on the side. Again, bringing in the visual, bringing in something that they might have seen in their textbook. And we did talk about, you know, plagiarism and things like that. But when you're taking notes in this case, copying and pasting for your own personal information, you know, it, it, it helps you out because here you go, if this was part of your um, textbook, and you pulled out the important information to remember what to study from, it's right here, especially with the pictures that go along with it, which really enhances everything, right? Okay, so let me go ahead and show you how this all works, so that you can actually try to do this on your own at some point, maybe even with your kids uh, uh, this week, which is possible, possible, you might want to try this. I know the teachers that I uh, did this with, right off the bat, were starting to use it, so you might want to try that. So in order to get to Google Drawing, you could obviously go through Google and just type in Google Drawing and do a search that way. But when the kids are in their Google Classroom, um, you could provide a link for them or you can go into the Google Drive. And the best place to find it, because it, believe it or not, is hidden, is in the news section, okay? You won't find it anywhere else. It's in the news section. And so if you go ahead and click New, the uh, window will open up. And if you clicked on more, that's where you're going to find it. So you have your Google Docs, your sheets, your slides, and your forms. And when you click on more, there you see Google Drawings right at the very top of the, uh, the menu there. And when you click that, that will open it up to a blank new page. So every time you do this, you will get a blank untitled drawing. Okay. The very first thing I tell the kids right off the bat is to make sure that they give their project a title. You want to give it some, whatever the title is, they can always change it later. But that's because if you don't do that, you're going to have lots of untitled drawings. And then to try to find something you're working on later on could be a little bit more problematic. Okay. Let me move my annotation down. You do have your workspace. So this whole space does come around. And if you take a look at the very bottom right-hand corner, there's a pull tab down there. And you can go ahead and stretch out your picture to whatever size you would like it to be. So that's pretty easy to do, um, especially if the kids you know, are, are building their digital sketch noting and they find that they've run out of some space. This is a great way to do that, okay? At the top, they have all of the 
menu items that they would have seen in their Google Slides or Google Docs. It's all about the same. Google will keep it consistent. So, which is great because you're not, once you've learned how to use the tools at the top, you're pretty familiar with them and it's pretty easy to continue on with them. So you have everything, and I'm just gonna go into the drawing section. You have everything from different sort of lines. There I go again with my annotation. Let's see if this way would be a lot better, right? You have different sorts of lines, connectors, pocket lines. You have a scribble. So if your kids are working on an iPad or a touch screen, and by the way, this works on every device you want, but if you have a touch screen and you click uh, scribble or an iPad and you're using a stylus, the kids can actually go ahead and draw things by themselves. They don't actually have to find the shapes if they want to do it freehand. So that's an option if you ever uh, wanted to do it. Let me undo that. Okay, so those were the lines and you could see the different types. So if you wanted to build your own graphic organizer, you, the kids could totally do this on their own. Um, they do have different shapes. So you could also build your own shape um, that way and there's lots to choose from, okay. There are your arrows, and this is where some of the kids use their arrows to point out certain things, bits of information or pictures. You have call outs, which are good, especially if you want to put a quote in from somebody or you want to put in from a uh, thought from uh, a famous figure. If you were doing someone, let's say, like George Washington or a famous president and you want to do that, that'd be fine. And of course, you have equations. So this works fantastically well in math. So if you wanted the kids to create their own math digital sketch noting, it's fantastic because you have all the equations here and you could also, once again, go to the top and use your scribble, okay, to actually put all that information in. You also have the text box. So that allows us to pull out and drag out a text box and you have all of the different types of text features that you would see in any one of the other Google uh, type of programs as well, okay? and that allows you, of course, to change out everything, um, especially when you're typing, okay? So let me get clear out my drawings again. So yeah, I, that's, that's my biggest problem with, this, with the annotations, okay? Um, you, of course, do have um, different ways to arrange things. So the kids can bring certain things in like pictures, and I'll show you how to do that in a second and order them a certain way. Um, you do have different tools that you can use at your disposal, like spelling and things like that. A dictionary is all on board right here, okay? And if you wanted to add picture, which is going to be the bulk of right, a digital sketch note here, we go ahead and if you insert up in the upper, right, up the upper left hand corner there and click on image, okay? You can go ahead and you can, I'm gonna see if I can, oh no, I was gonna annotate over that, but it does always disappear. So let me go back to that image. You can upload a picture from your computer. So if you had a picture that you found online and you saved it, or a digital picture you took from uh, your computer or a digital camera, or even an iPhone or, or a mobile digital device, you can upload it. Or you can also go into your Google Drive or your Google Photos. You can actually search it by the URL, which is harder to do, of course, for the younger kid. But the best feature here is the search the web, because once you click on that in the right-hand corner there, you get the Google images box. So if I put in, I usually try to tell the kids to do a PNG file, um, which will be a, a transparent background. So if I choose one of these cats to input in, okay, I could double click it and put it in. And now I've got my cat right over here and I can move this cat wherever I want. Okay, so if I wanted to go ahead, I'm just gonna get rid of the markings there. If I want to go ahead and move this cat around on the page, it's really easy. It slides easily. I can pinch this down so I could move it around if I need a little bit more space. So if I were completing uh, even like a Venn diagram between, let's say, cats and dogs, I can go ahead and insert a Venn diagram. Okay, so I can do the same thing and type in Venn. I'll do that here. And I like to do, like I said, the PNG file, because what you'll do is you'll find lots of different versions. So if you wanted to find your own uh, Venn diagram, you can, okay? And you could just drop it in. So even if we were gonna do a triple, let's just do a triple for time's sake here. If I were gonna bring the triple in, you could bring that in and now you have your picture, right? We could arrange it so that I send that to the back. And now I can bring my cat in Okay, and I can put my cat 
over here, I could add a dog, maybe I want to add a bird, we can talk about different characters in a book that you might want to do a Venn diagram on or a triple Venn or some kind of T chart if you are comparing and contrasting. So again, you can take what you're learning here today and really expand it and include it in lots of curriculum areas, um, all digitally. And the best part about this is at the end, you can go ahead and the kids could print it out if they want to at home or in your classroom, but you could also download this as a PDF document or an image file like a JPEG or a PNG, which is really great because then if you're working on it and you ask the kids to share by, via um, your Google Classroom, you can share that way, or they can simply email it to you. Or if they're working on a project with other friends and they come up with something, they can email it to one another, right? So you can email it through your Google Classroom as well, which is fantastic. So that is, in a nutshell, the digital sketch noting. So we learned today all about what regular sketch noting is. And of course, you could take all the ideas from this and transport it into a regular paper and pencil type of activity. But I'm going to tell you just from experience from this year alone, the kids were so into this and so engaged that even when we ran out of time, they wanted to still work on it. And some of them did on their own time, which is really amazing. So that's what you want to kind of generate, especially with a digital age that we're in now and whatever remote learning or hybrid learning we're going to have starting next year. Incorporating this, even if your kids are in front of you, sitting in front of you, is a great way to draw them in and to really immerse them in the curriculum that you're working on. And again, math, reading, science, social studies, it works for all of that. Um, so whatever you can think of, you can actually do digitally now. And the best part about it, again, is that you have the sharing option with you or sharing to have multiple people working on the same project at the same time. Or they can go ahead and print it and hang it up as a bulletin board, a homework, an exam, a quiz, anything along those lines. You have that ability um, to do all that. It's a lot of fun. It's engaging. They truly love it. Um, I'm going to do this again next year with the kids, uh, whether we're in person or not. That's what I'm going to be doing. And that's really digital sketch noting. So um, I don't know if we have any questions in the chat or anything, but if Amanda wants to jump in, we'll go ahead and take those questions. Okay, so this, yeah, this would be a great time to pass it over to our chat moderators. Do we have any questions or just feedback comments for Adam? Um, I didn't see any questions, but there was definitely a comment for working with and supporting other teachers and their content. And um, so kudos to you for doing that. Right. And um, I think everyone was just so in awe. I know Google Drawings sometimes is the unknown stepchild of Google, and it's so valuable. So really neat to see it in action. 100%. And again, across the curriculum, Again, you know, if I had more time with second graders, I probably would have tried it with second graders, but I think for this year, three, four, five and above, absolutely, it worked fantastic. I know that I really appreciated you sharing those student examples. It's really powerful to see how you modeled for everyone and then see the work that they actually created. So thank you for, you know, just showing so many varied examples and real student work and how exactly the process would go for you to give them the feedback. I think that was super helpful for everybody. Thank you. Appreciate it. We just have a, a lot of support and excitement in the chat. No questions. Does anybody else have anything you'd like to ask Adam while we've got him on video here? All right. Well, thank you so much, Adam. I know that we really appreciated you being available today. You've done a great job with all of your Promethean presentations. Thanks for being one of our PEP educators. Love the t-shirt <laughs> representing Promethean all day long. Uh, and I'm excited to incorporate some sketch noting to my future presentation. So I loved everything about it. Thanks so much. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me and, and let me know if uh, you start to use it, how, you, how it's going.